you're a woman in your late 30s, 40s, 50s, and wondering why do I all of a sudden have brain fog? Let's explore that today. If you're new here, thanks so much for being here. Welcome back if you are, have watched any of the prior videos, but on this channel I talk about functional medicine topics like hormone health and perimenopause, postmenopause, even I've talked a lot in the past about gut health and, and gene health So there and metabolism. There's a lot going on here on the channel, so feel free to dive in. I've been on, the, on YouTube since 2019, but in my functional medicine practice, I focus on all of these two, two because I am a functional medicine doctor, a registered dietitian, nutritionist, and uh, a woman who's gone through perimenopause and menopause. So lots of experience in this area. And today we're going to be talking about brain fog and the hormone changes that may um, bring on brain fog. So particularly perimenopause. So what can cause brain fog and perimenopause? And if you didn't think, oh, if you think maybe I'm not in perimenopause, it can start earlier than you think it might. And this could still apply even if you're not in perimenopause because the um, symptoms could be a sign of a hormone imbalance. Granted, there are other things like stress that can cause um, brain fog, but let's talk about um, brain fog in perimenopause. So it is a very common symptom. And I just wanted to mention that I do have a whole blog on this and I'm just referencing the blog so that I touch on all the important points. If you see me looking over, that's what I'm looking at, or that's what I'm looking at. But uh, my blog is perimenopause.help and I try to post on there weekly or biweekly um, about hormone health in women, especially during the perimenopause, menopause time frame of their lives. So um, it, hormonal fluctuations like estrogen and progesterone changes are can contribute as well as stress that can cr contribute to brain fog um, and poor sleep. And the brain fog that we're talking about here it can be a lot of different, mean a lot of different things to different women. So it could be just like your brain is tired, it could be difficulty concentrating, trouble remembering, um, simple words sometimes. Now, granted, that could be something more complicated or more in-depth that you need to explore with your provider, and I'm not here to replace your provider. You do want to see your medical provider if you're concerned about any of these symptoms, but I'm just telling you that these can, things can be associated. So sometimes a little bit of confusion and sometimes a simple forgetfulness. Um, and it can improve as women go through perimenopause or they get their hormones more balanced. And when you get to the year that you've gone, uh, uh, the day that you've gone a year without a period, that's officially menopause. And then after that, you're postmenopausal. Any confusion on that, check out all my blogs and videos on that. So, um, when you get to be postmenopausal, your hormones are still up and down for a bit. But then you kind of hit this steady state and you may not have as much brain fog. You may still have brain fog, in which case make it worse. You, you do want to talk to your provider about that if it's not leveling out or getting any better. Um, so some management strategies can be lifestyle changes, uh, the natural remedies that I talk about and natural healing that I talk about a lot on this, this channel. And then some women may want to consider bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. So you can have fluctuations in um, perimenopause and menopause in your estrogen, progesterone, and even your testosterone. Yes, women do need a certain level of testosterone to feel good. So estrogen, quick review of the phases. In the first phase of perimenopause, you will have your estrogen kind of roller coastering or maybe skyrocketing at times, but you're gonna have that progesterone gradually declining. And then when you have that gap in the estrogen and progesterone levels, we can refer to that as estrogen dominance. So if you see any of my blogs about estrogen dominance or in my videos, that's what I'm talking about. So that can be the first phase and then you move into like a later phase of perimenopause where the estrogen then joins the progesterone and starts coming down. And then you may have more of the hot flashes and night sweats and more of the um, insomnia, but you can have insomnia in the first phase too. And then that cognitive function, that change in um, that brain health and like the brain fog can make, can rear its ugly head during any of these stages. So estrogen does help to boost our memory and our learning through the hippocampus where the brain's memory center is. And it also helps our emotional health. So all those things can factor into brain fog when the estrogen is dropping. And then progesterone helps us um, with sleep. And it can also help our mental 
function and our mental alertness too. Testosterone, like we said, is in smaller amounts, but it can also contribute to brain fog during um, perimenopause because it can improve when we have enough testosterone can improve our blood flow, our nerve, nervous system, kind of communication going on there and our energy levels for both men and women. So it is important to have good levels. We also want to think about, I forgot to mention this when going through the hormones, but cortisol. I have had quite a few videos on cortisol. I work with cortisol levels a lot in my functional medicine practice in Denver. And it, if your cortisol is off, it can make your perimenopause and menopause experience a lot worse. So that's why I do tests like the Dutch test. I have a whole video and, and blogs on the Dutch test. And it's a urine test where we can look at the breakdown of your cortisol and where it's going throughout the day. Look at how your estrogen is breaking down, how your progesterone levels are, how your testosterone. We look on a much deeper level. And that can help us look at all of these hormones to see what might be contributing to your brain fog. So it's a great test, pricey, of course, like a lot of functional medicine is, unfortunately, but um, it's, it's a great test to help us figure this out. But you can also look at these individual levels in other ways and work on them without looking at them, too, as far as if you don't have the, the money to look at them in a functional medicine way. Um, so it is, cortisol is our stress hormone. So if it's way out of whack, like too high, too low, that's going to contribute to brain fog too. So if you need to know more about that, check out my video on estrogen effect on cortisol and then cortisol supplement video also, or improving cortisol video. And I'll put those in the description. So um, I already talked about what brain fog feels like during perimenopause. How long does it last? Well, it can vary and it depends on your overall health, your lifestyle, are you drinking too much alcohol? That can make our brain function worse. Are you not getting enough sleep? That can make our brain fu function worse. Is your life too stressful? Or, you know, sometimes you don't have control over that. But experience, if you're experiencing too much stress, that can lead to brain fog also. Um, so it could last just during the early stages of perimenopause and then get better. Or it could last the whole time and into postmenopause, which is when you want to look at some of those other solutions if it's really a persistent symptom. Um, you can work on it though, and that's what the blog talks about too, but I'm gonna touch on that here. So brain boosting ex or brain boosting lifestyle. So exercise, you know, came to my mind when I was saying that, and that is one of the great ways to boost memory and brain function. So not all exercises are created equal. I've talked about this a lot in my cortisol videos and even in my hormone videos where if you're exercising too intensely for what your blood sugar and your cortisol and your hormones prefer, if they don't prefer that intense exercise, you may feel worse and be more brain foggy during or after exercise. So if you do feel like your symptoms are getting worse after the type of exercise you're doing, change it up. So it could be too intense. It could be too long in duration. You may want to try yoga, Pilates, um, gentle, slow strength training, uh, circuit training, and stay away from the hard, harder hitting cardio or the longer duration cardio. So find an exercise you like and find one that you feel good and you get energized by and not completely depleted by. Of course, when you first start exercising, you're going to feel tired. But, you know, finding something that ha that kind of is in your groove and can fit in your lifestyle and that uh, can uh, revitalize you after, you know, you get used to it after the first couple weeks of doing it. So as I talked about, also you want to um, avoid or limit alcohol. So I've talked about that a lot on my hormone videos. And if you can keep your alcohol intake to zero, awesome. If you can lower it to two to four drinks a week, awesome. Um, if Especially if you're starting from a place where you're like six or seven a week or more, which I see some of women that are drinking um, two or three drinks a night. Sorry. That is not alcohol. That is herbal tea. <laughs> so and check out my video last week on my herbal teas for menopause. Not mine, but on herbal teas for menopause. But anyway, um, if you are drinking too much alcohol, that can definitely impact your brain function. Um, what else? So eating a supportive diet. So nutrients that are helpful for brain health. So getting half of your, your body weight, your lean body weight, at least um, in protein grams at the minimum. So, you know, let's say you weigh 140 getting 70 grams, but then if you're active, if you're exercising daily or almost daily, 
boosting that up, you know, another 10 to 15 grams to help get adequate protein intake. Um, getting, uh, lowering your sugar. So keeping your added sugar to 20 grams or less and looking at your labels, like I've talked about before, making sure you're getting one gram of fiber for every 10 grams of carbs. So making sure the closer you can get those numbers together, fiber and carbs. Um, so the lower the carbs, the higher the fiber, the better for your brain health and for detoxification and hormone balance. You also do want to make sure you're getting plenty of fat. So good, healthy fat, not fried foods necessarily. I mean, once in a while, sure, but the more you can avoid those, the better, but like healthy nuts, nut butter, seeds, um, and uh, avocado are great ways and olive oil. So more like that Mediterranean type diet is really, really anti-inflammatory and good for your brain health. And then you also want to prioritize sleep. It's got to be a priority for you. You want to not watch TV in bed, not look at your screens in bed, keep those blue light screens off for at least an hour if you can before bed. Um, keep them as far away from the bed as you can and uh, definitely have a relax and kind of unwind process that you go through every night. And that could include some gentle stretching, herbal tea, um, some meditation or deep breathing, reading a um, maybe a, a nice fiction book or a, a soothing book of some sort, an actual book. Um, and then keeping your temperature in your room of where you sleep around 68 to 70 degrees, if you can comfortably do that, that's a great way to encourage good sleep. And you want to aim for seven to nine hours of sleep. And another thing to focus on is try to make that sleep time consistent. So even on the weekends, if you can, but, you know, during your work week, whatever that may be, you're trying to go to bed in between 10 and 11, if you can, and wake up between six and seven, or just trying to make it as consistent as possible. Your hormones really, really love consistency and your brain really loves good quality sleep. Let's see if I'm forgetting anything. Oh, engage in mental stimulation. So keeping your brain active with puzzles, with reading, with learning new skills, learning a new language traveling, you know, seeing new things, stimulated outside, going outside into nature and checking out the leaves and looking at the grass and trying to notice how many different colors you see or um, what you're observing, observing outside instead of looking at your phone. I know you all probably experience it too, but you go outside and you really see everyone, almost everyone you see on their phone or rushing somewhere. Slow down, take your time, decompress. Those are all great ways to keep your brain healthy. Um, and then if you need support, definitely, oh, uh, hobbies too, I meant to say, like craft, some kind of crafting, um, some kind of uh, thing like painting that can use that other side of your brain is also very helpful too. So prioritize your self-care if you're not um, spending enough time you know, doing those mindfulness activities, doing those creative hobbies, getting outside, having enough, if you don't have enough time to exercise, you got to rethink your life and look at how you can fit those things in. Because if you don't have enough time for those things, then you're probably overdoing something else that is leading to stress, which is then leading to brain fog and hormone imbalance. So seeking help, like with a therapist, if you need help, um, that's very helpful. There's a lot of online therapists if you don't have one in your community or it's too hard to get to someone. Um, and then for mindfulness and meditation, I like to use that Aura app, A-U-R-A, -A, and I'll put a link to that where you can try it free for seven days uh, in the description, see if you like it. But there are um, therapists, oh, sorry, my phone was giving me a low storage um, notice. So there are therapists on the Aura app that have recorded sessions recorded tips and guidelines and and something simple like that could be cheaper for you and a way to check in with yourself also and then if you get to the point where you want to consider natural treatment um it could be as simple as omega-3s so i love omega-3s fish oil algae oil chia walnut flax um, those are all great. Trying to get 1,000 to 2,000 milligrams of omega-3s. Trying a B-complex, maybe having your B12 and B6 and folate levels checked by your doctor first. But trying a B-complex, methylated folate is great. Methylated methyl B12 is great. Um, B6, not just a small amount, maybe 5 to 10 milligrams um, in a supplement, getting those all together. 
of the five to twelve, ten of the B six, the um, full ladies usually gonna be like four hundred to eight hundred, and the B twelve maybe a thousand five hundred to a thousand micrograms. So, and then adaptogenic herbs like rhodiola, ashwagandha, ginkgo, sage, and holy basil are all herbs that can help with your hormone balance and help boost your memory and brain function. So check those out. Thanks so much for joining me. Check out the blog at perimenopause.help. And I appreciate you being here. Remember to like, um, subscribe, and share this video. And check out, and, um, check out the other videos if you want to learn more about perimenopause and menopause. Thanks. See you next time.